So give us a little bit more context what this would mean for Elizabeth Holmes now going forward. So right now it looks like they're working through the various charges, eight charges, and yes, uh, officially Elizabeth Holmes has been found guilty in this fraud trial. She's been found not guilty on count number two, and as I understand it, uh, they are going through count by count, but one guilty count is a guilty verdict. So all of these counts carry a maximum of 20 years in prison. Those would be served concurrently, so likely she wouldn't serve more than 20 years in prison, even if she's guilty on all eight counts. We're getting another headline in that she is, uh, the jury has no verdict on counts three, four, and five. Uh, so on those counts, those must be the counts that uh, the jury was at an impasse on. Uh, but right now, the, of course, the big takeaway is that she has been found guilty on at least one count, not guilty on count number two. We're getting count number six and seven now. Guilty on count number six and seven. Uh, so we've got now uh, four more counts that we are waiting for. We're giving to this to all of you in real time. Guilty on count number eight. Uh, so we'll be waiting for count number nine. 10 and 11. Um, again, the maximum sentence for all of these counts is 20 years in prison, but that would be served concurrently, and she wouldn't serve more than 20 years in prison, uh, you know, because those that, that jail time mm -hmm. would be served concurrently, but um, still waiting for three more counts. Emily, while we wait for those last three counts, let's talk a little bit about counts three, four, and five, where no verdict was reached. Uh, that suggests that this isn't over. What's going to happen? Will she be retried on those three counts? And could we expect an appeal on those counts on which she was found guilty? And Paul, we just got another not guilty uh, verdict on count number 10. Uh, so still waiting for 9 and 11, uh, I believe. Not guilty on count number 11. Um, right now, the prosecution, based on those three counts, uh, could have an option uh, to, to, to file for a retrial. But even one guilty verdict is a victory for the prosecution. So I would say right now this is a victory uh, for the United States. Uh, this is a victory for the prosecution. And it was always the government's case to lose. There was a ton of evidence presented, a ton of evidence against Elizabeth Holmes, and a ton of evidence that seemed to show that she indeed misled investors. Then Elizabeth herself took the stand, and she offered very compelling testimony. Uh, she said she was sexually and emotionally abused by her business partner. Um, she had many I do not recalls, I don't remember, I don't think I did. It was a very widespread defense. Uh, and if she were to have been found not guilty on all of these counts in this case, uh, you know, the experts would have said it was based on her testimony alone, which was, again, very compelling. However, uh, this is a huge, this is a loss for her. Mm. This is a loss for her. Um, and others will look at this as, some will look at this as an indictment of the culture of Silicon Valley, the sort of fake it till you make it, the stretching the truth in the, ch in, in the pursuit of the big inno innovation and a big, in, um, big fortune, fame and fortune. Um, and so uh, huge, huge news here that Elizabeth Holmes has been found guilty, now guilty on multiple counts of wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Tell us a little bit more about that culture and the broader implication for Silicon Valley, because as you said, it has been a lot about aspirational statements of these startups, right? How they can improve people's lives through technology. We know that Elizabeth Holmes attempted to imitate Steve Jobs, for example. Uh, will Silicon Valley look back and, and sort of reassess where they're at? There's a huge camp of folks in Silicon Valley who believe that Elizabeth Holmes does not represent Silicon Valley at all. They will point to the fact that her investors were not traditional investors, uh, traditional Silicon Valley venture capitalists. They were people like the Walton family and Rupert Murdoch. Uh, others will say uh, she was, uh, you know, she was a product of Stanford University, which is literally based in Silicon Valley. Theranos itself was based in Silicon Valley. One of her earliest investors was Tim Draper, a longtime. Silicon Valley investor. Uh, in many ways, she is an outlier. She is so extraordinary uh, in, in terms of what she claimed, the amount of money she raised, and also the fact that she was a woman, and the fact that 
Very, very few white collar cases actually go to trial, and this one went all the way. Um, so, you know, in, in some respects, uh, there are folks who, who, who don't want to claim uh, any, any relation to Elizabeth Holmes as sort of a product of Silicon Valley, um, and others who say she is a perfect example of the overly optimistic salesmanship that you often see here among founders. However, most of the time, they're not called on it. They are not prosecuted. Very, very few uh, cases like this actually go to trial. Emily, for those viewers who are perhaps not familiar with the background of this case, can you tell us what it was about and give us some examples of that over-optimistic salesmanship that occurred? Elizabeth Holmes claimed that Theranos technology, that Theranos' blood testing machine could conduct over a thousand tests, when in actuality it can conduct maybe a dozen tests. The other tests were conducted on traditional machines that didn't use Theranos technology at all. She claimed Theranos was being used on the battlefield to test the blood of soldiers. She claimed that contracts with companies like Safeway and pharmacies like Walgreens were going to reap millions and millions of dollars in a short amount of time. There are recordings of her speaking with a Fortune News reporter, Roger Parloff, where she most definitely stretches the truth. There are recordings of her speaking to investors where she most definitely stretches the truth and some would argue outright lies. And this jury has decided that she is indeed guilty, guilty of misleading investors on multiple counts. Uh, now, as I understand it, Elizabeth Holmes today will be leaving the courtroom. Uh, you know, sh the sentencing will come later. But I do want to emphasize she now faces up to 20 years in prison. Even though she's been found guilty of multiple counts, guilty on multiple counts, those sentences will be served concurrently. She likely won't serve more than 20 years in, pri in prison. Um, and in, in, in speaking with various legal experts, that sentence will likely be reduced. What do we know, Emily, uh, at this point of what's happening to her uh, one-time romantic partner and uh, former president of Theranos, Balwani? Sonny Balwani, who his trial is coming up in February. Elizabeth Holmes will likely not be a witness in that trial, though now with a guilty verdict, uh, you know, we'll have to talk to legal experts uh, about the potential of that. His case will be a completely different case, much more focused on technical, financial, and scientific arguments, not touching on the sort of physical and emotional and sexual abuse that Elizabeth Holmes has alleged. It is a totally separate case. It is coming up in February. And I would say that a guilty verdict for Elizabeth Holmes does not bode well for Sonny Balwani. If a jury has come to this conclusion about Elizabeth's involvement, given how close closely they worked together, uh, it's going to make this an uphill battle for him.